Now this article comes from Louder Sound and it's not the most metal, metal article but it just kind of relates to the current situation. Are driving gigs and pay-per-view concerts the post-pandemic future? Current global circumstances still has the music world in its infectious tight grip. When Britain's government declared that pubs in England could reopen on tr July 4th, but that live entertainment remained off limits, musicians, many struggling financially, continue to look for ways of presenting their art and also ways to generate an income. A company called Cadenza TV has begun streaming pay-per-view multi-camera live electric concerts. Back in April, the Light Buffalo, aka Jake Smith, presented the first of a pair of shows by Cadenza as part of the promotion of his new album on the Widow's Walk. First fans from 68 countries tuned in to watch an hour long show followed by a Q&A presented in HD quality audio. And in June, Cadenza broadcast a special set with a set that shows my fans presented from the Billy Up Tavern in California. Now, Cadenza Stephen D. Brunkat tells Classic Rock that nobody is claiming that digital performances will ever replace a live show. It's the sweat, the energy and excitement that makes the experience of seeing a band on stage so special. But I will believe that we'll have have here gets as close to that as current circumstances will allow. Approximately 1,500 viewers paid to watch the Belly Up Tavern performance broadcast, which had a free tiered ticket price, and it seems the arrangement is women for everyone concerned. Fans receive their mix of music, artists get to perform and get paid, and venues are able to generate vital income. The Belly Up Tavern has has had to close for three months, so for that, so for us, that income was priceless, says. Chris Goldsmith, who works for the venue. Getting to st stage live music again was a joy and a blessing. This goes on to say, it was complicated. Firstly, we did a thorough deep clean of the hall. Of course, it was essential personnel only, the band, camera crew, a sound engineer, and a lighting person. We were very conscious of social distancing. Everybody wore masks, including the band, except when they were on stage. We had giant exhaust fans, and doors were kept open so everyone felt safe. Crucially, the quality of streamed concert was comparable to a DVD. As fans will be all too aware, many living room web broadcast shows, often shot on a smartphone, are haphazard. Following their success with the White Buffalo, Cadenza are looking to present more artists. That also goes on to say, a lot of bands are trying to work out strategies of how to perform in this new world, and we are trying to help them with that. We are going to do some shows in the Netherlands and some in the UK, and in the States as well as Canada. Our pitch to bands is, we know this is scary for you, we have no idea how many fans will show up, but we are willing to take on that risk. In the next few months, you will be seeing a lot of these shows popping up on the horizon across different genres. Mike Buffalo took up pleasure from his unusual performance at the Belly Up. I love that the presentation was top quality, he tells. I've seen other shows were sitting in, in their underwear in their house. The audio cuts in or out, or the pitch quality is pixelated. This is a whole different model. I must say that playing to a room full of cameramen instead of an audience is weird. At first I felt quite awkward and had to navigate around that. So it's still a bit of a learning curve. It will also have a felt a lot of different for the fans at home in front of their computer or TV screens. The protocol of finishing a set proper, leaving the stage and returning for an encore, even a second encore as witness at the belly up, is something that artists are going to have to work around. Those extended silences were pretty painful for the performance. And TWD acknowledges, yeah, totally. I wasn't pr planning on doing a second encore, but I was told that a bunch of people had a question, so why not? He also believes that, for the time being at least, professional stream shows are probably the best way forward when it comes to live entertainment while venues remain closed. He also goes on to say that I don't think there will be a p ever permanent replacement for contents as we know them and we will hopefully know them again. But as a temporary replacement right now, we don't have any other options, he points out. Singer Emmett have, have felt conflicted when it came to releasing his latest album during the pandemic, but reached the conclusion that people need music, new music to keep them entertained during difficult times. I just wish we could get out on the road and promote it. I just wish I knew when all of the troubles were all, all having with live shows will end. But nobody knows. And, that, and when that time comes, what will things look like? Will artists play bigger rooms but with smaller capacities to allow social distancing? And how do you police the audience behaviour? Everyone used to run to the front of the stage. Would you have areas taped off or squares on the floor? I just don't know. And even then, how many venues will survive much without income? 
He also said that he's hearing worrying rumours about the Troubadour in West Hollywood, which has staged concerts for 60 years but might not reopen, which will be a terrible loss. Now, in the UK, concert promoters Live Nation put together their own open-air travelling package. Utility Alive from the drive in was due to visit travel venues across the UK from the end of July to September, with a lineup that included Ash, Skin Dread, Reef, featuring Andy Taylor, Gary Newman, Kaiser Chiefs, Beverly Knight, Bjorn again, and these are our school and many others, but plans were scuppered as the lockdown conditions changed. They said that we received huge support from the artists, the live music production contractors, our headline sponsor, Utilita, and of course, you, the fan. But the latest developments regarding localised lockdowns means it has become impossible for us to continue the series of any confidence. It, now, it wasn't going to be a normal show in accordance with health regulations. 400 cars were allowed to per drive in a show with two to seven people allowed per vehicle along, with alongside each car there will be a room to stand or place folding chairs. The driving format has already been tried out for con on the continent following her performance in the German Sea of Worms. Former Warlock singer Dora Pesch posted a photo of herself off stage amid the cars of full, full of fans but keeping a permissible distance. She said, what an amazing crowd, we had a blast. But certainly, the idea doesn't appeal to everyone. Machine Head frontman Rob Flynn said to Kerrang, I was some driving show where people sat in their cars and honked when, when they liked what the band played. It was the stupid, stupidest thing I've ever seen. Former Duran Duran slash power station guitarist Andy Taylor, who is due to perform with Reef Lab on Lanny's package, believes the format has been well thought out. After seven people in the car and allocated space at the side to stand and drink, that's plenty of room to mosh, he tells Classic Rock. The way I see it, we need to introduce something new because for the next year everything is going to be completely screwed. It has to be this format. The other choice is staying at home. After all that pent up hell and frustration over the past several months, I believe that people deserve some entertainment. This gives us a chance of raising some from the ashes. Perhaps the biggest issue of all, though, is how many concert goers will feel safe to return to live events when guide Ghana's permit. When surveyed, only 36% of those who said yes to the question, despite 89% insisting they were keen to experience a gig again. Back in June, the Music Venue Trust called upon the UK government for a £50 million cash injunction to prevent the closure of a of venues across the country. In addition, as part of the UK's UK Music's Let the Music Play campaign, over a thousand artists sent an open letter to the Culture Secretary calling for help to secure the UK's live music scene. In response, the government announced a one point fifty seven billion package of support for the entertainment sector. Meanwhile, as the industry attempts to work out where its future lies, artists continue to use the internet as a platform for workshops, concerts, and a method of raising final funds. The Music Venue Trust has teamed up with Marsh Records to create a unique save, hashtag Save Our Venues t-shirt, and all donations are welcome. Elsewhere, via the music subscriber Patreon, bands have offered cheap deals for exclusive access to new music, special playlists, live Q&A and more. Iron Man's frontman Nate Bergman, for example, is showcasing his soulful outlaw country come heart and solo style with new songs, live concerts and more, exclusively via Patreon for $5 a month, while massive wagons, wagons launched Wagons World, promising to give fans access to the band's inner circle and build a community around their music. In TV streamed Homemade music sessions with performances from former Doors guitarist Robbie Krieger, Easy Hell, and, Hot and Joe Hottinger from Hellstone, Bon Jovi guitarist Phil X, Joe James Nichols, and many more. Guy Pratt, the British bassist and songwriter, best known for working with Pink Floyd, reached 10 episodes of his Masterclass series Lockdown Licks. Some artists such as Stephen Watson and Tim Bonus continue to release fascinating podcasts. For artists who perform online regularly, the challenge is to keep things fresh. UK rockers scam revisited each of from their catalogue in its entirety, followed by a new wave of classic rock covers and, say, and a set of songs they done in previous weeks, voted by fans. Others used their time, time to collaborate with friends, hence the Cherry Truck Band series, a fusion of Blackstone Cherry and Monster Truck. 
from their living room if they offer their live find the wall style insight into the process of songwriting. Last month, the UK's first venue built for social distance events was announced. The Virgin Money UK Unity Arena at Gosford Park in Newcastle, and a week ago, the first show took place. Groups of up to five, five fans had their own viewing platforms to minimise the risk of infection, while audience members wore, wore face coverings as they made their way to the site close as we ordered drinks. Next, more shows at Gosford Park have been confirmed. A row of a certainty in an extremely uncertain world, but normality still feels like a very, very long way off. Now, I'm a heavy metal fan, like most of you who subscribe and watch videos on this channel. I'm a rogue feeling in this one. Drive, driving concerts are not a great idea, but we'll have to part with what they'll have to do for the meantime to allow musicians to earn money. But putting that aside, I do support the CMA Venues campaign because every up and coming musician had to start somewhere, and if you, can't, if you don't have a small venue to showcase your music, then what will the new blood have? 